All right, let's look at solving or verifying some of these identities. So there's an equation signed in the middle. I want to work on the more complex side and simplify it and put it into the building blocks of sine and cosine. So I have that here. This is sine. Cotangent is cosine over sine. And I'm going to keep cosine as it is. I keep my equal sign working all the way down. Now I have two fractions being added together. I need a common denominator. I'm going to multiply this by sine over sine. So my numerator, that's going to give me sine squared all over sine plus cosine squared over sine. I should draw all my thetas in. I'm just going quickly. Uh, I have a common denominator. I could add my numerators together. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta all over sine. And I could see that. Hopefully I recognize that as a Pythagorean identity. So that's 1 over sine. Then I know that's a reciprocal identity. It's cosecant. So cosecant of theta is equal to cosecant of theta. They're always hard until you see them done, and then they seem easy. So again, first thing I do is I put them all into the built. Well, first thing I do is decide which side to work on. I always take the more complex side and work to simplify it. The second thing I do is I put in the building blocks of sine and cosine. And then I'm trying to combine terms together to get it into a cosecant. Take a look at another one. This one right here is 1 minus tan of theta quantity squared. So that's the same thing as 1 minus tangent of theta times a quantity 1 minus tangent of theta. So I'm going to FOIL that out, my first terms. FOIL first, 1 minus tan, minus tan, so minus 2 tan of theta. Negative tan times negative tan is plus tangent squared of theta. Okay, and I can see right away um, I'm approaching the right answer because this minus 2 tan is the same as this minus 2 tan of theta. And then anytime I see a square, I'm thinking Pythagorean. I know that tangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared of theta. And I can see that's where I'm going. So I take that and that, and I use a Pythagorean identity with tangent squared, and I replace that with secant squared of theta minus 2 tan of theta. And then that's what I was asked to prove, secant squared of theta minus 2 tan of theta. So really, first thing I did here was figure out which side to work on. Left side is more complicated. I opened it up by foiling it first, outer, inner, last. And then I used Pythagorean identity to replace this with this. And then, um, then it all came together. Let's do one last one right here. It really helps a lot to have the identities um, right in front of you so you have something to refer to them with. So here, left side is much more complex than right. I have fractions with different denominators, so I need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this side by sine over sine, and this by cosine over cosine. A little crowded here. And that's going to give me sine times cosecant. That's a reciprocal of 1 over sine of theta, cosine of theta, minus cosine times cosine cosine squared of theta, all over sine cosine. Now I'm going to combine them. I have 1 minus cosine squared of theta, all over sine cosine. And hopefully you recognize this as a Pythagorean identity. Um, anytime there's a square, it's probably going to be a Pythagorean identity. So if I have cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals 1, Right here, I could subtract cosine squared from both sides. Oop, a lot of room there. And I could see that sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So I replace this with sine squared of theta all over sine cosine. Sine squared is the same thing as sine times sine. So I'm going to get rid of that square and make it sine times sine. These will cancel, and that leaves me with a sine over a cosine. And that's what I was asked to prove. Sine over cosine is a quotient identity. And tangent of theta is equal to tangent 
alpha theta. Again, this is verifying identities, the proofs. I only pick one side to work on. I work down, my equal signs line up, and then my last step is what I was asked to prove. Those are three example problems there.